Hi everyone, I thought I'd spend a couple minutes showing you the problems that we're having with our white flies here. Before we get started, I wanted to thank our Patreon contributors. Our top contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GreenLifePlanet.net, GlassBottleOutlet.com, and GrowPockets.com. Thanks a lot. I've been battling the white flies for most of the summer, and even now that we're getting into the winter, we still have them. And I actually think it's getting a little bit worse. They seem to continue breeding, but now we don't have any of the predatory insects eating them, like uh, the ladybugs, since it's too cold for them. They tend to be fairly selective with their plants. They don't bother the tea at all. They must not like it, and the leaves are too tough. But this radish, they certainly like this one. Over the summer, they were all over my tomatoes. I have a couple of volunteers that are coming up in the beds, and these have them all over it, too. They're also in the strawberries, along with my fungus gnat, so I'm going to pull all these out, too. This whole patch was just a couple of plants at the beginning of the season and now there's probably a hundred plants in here that I'm just going to take out and they don't bother the oregano at all so we're going to leave that in here. There's no evidence. You almost have to wonder if you could make some type of a oil out of this and spray it on your plants to help deter them. They don't bother the rosemary at all. I don't even see them flying around it ever. And my nasturtium has some on it also. I have some celery here and have a few on these leaves too. Basically anything with a fairly tender leaf that probably doesn't taste horrible, they're going to go after it. During the summer I didn't see any white flies on the lemon plant, but now I see a few now that we have a few of the yellow lemons. so. They're just attracted to the yellow and that's about it. They don't hang out very long on the lemons once they discover that they can't get through their skin and feed off of them at all. Here's a lettuce that's a little bit older than the other ones and you can see it's badly infested. Some of the plants I can just dunk into the water and get them off. Most of these I just feed to the guinea pig thing is that the white flies like to float on top of the water just from the surface tension and it doesn't seem to drown them and a lot of them can actually just fly away once they get their bearings again. It's hard to see on camera but when I do dip these there's a little bit of residue floating on the water and that is from the neem oil and insecticidal soap that I've been spraying on the plants. So a lot of people say that helps to keep them under control, but I haven't seen any evidence of that. I do have yellow sticky traps hanging in the greenhouse all over the place. You can see they are filled with white flies and some fungus gnats. So they are helping a little bit, but it's very easy for them to breed right on the leaves. So. These are just catching the few that happen to be flying around. So I think next year I'll definitely put the traps down in with the plants. I set up my daughter's camera so we can get a couple of nice close-up shot of these things. Let's see them in action. I've also tried using lemongrass oil and kapow, which is essentially the lemongrass oil, with no effect on them either. So I think just by removing the plants and uh, trying to get rid of the area where they can breed and try to freeze them out over the winter, it's probably my best solution right now. So if you have any suggestions on how to eradicate these things, 
leave a comment and it would also be helpful to provide any references that you have. So that's about it. Just a quick video on our white fly problem. Thanks for watching. Hi there, just a quick post-production note. Um, I had posted a picture of the white flies on our Facebook page and had a whole bunch of responses from that. And a few people suggested trying to use no fly or PFR 97, which is a fungal culture. And that's used to basically infect the flies and aphids and other things and kills them that way. And somebody also suggested spinosad, I think that's how it's pronounced, which is a bacteria that can also infect, but they have to ingest that in order to uh, kill them. And of course a few people have uh, suggested doing some type of uh, integrated pest management like the predatory wasps. Um, with all of these, though, I'm a little bit concerned about how cold it is in the greenhouse since um, something like the no-fly says that it has to be between 70 and 90 degrees in there for it to be effective. And keeping the greenhouse cold during the winter at 50 degrees really uh, will make all these uh, solutions probably not work. So it's going to take a little more research for those.